<laughs> Welcome to another riveting edition of Inside the Humidor. I'm Josh Eagle, as always with Ed Brandyberry. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the cigars from the Berg. That's right. Right here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, we have some great cigars being produced yeah. from the mines of Pittsburghers. They're not actually rolling them here in Pittsburgh yet. No, no. But I don't think the... Uh, the river water. I don't tobacco. know what Sam does in his basement, though. So you never yeah, know. Yeah, I've had some basement <laughs> cigars from Sam, and they're they're really good. I guess that's where the, all the exploration comes in, and a lot of shops that uh, sure you know, like this particular shop here in Minute Township, that right. uh, Stack Cigar was born here that as well. That's so. right. We have three exciting companies, you know, that we're going to feature today. We have uh, Lasia Tobacco uh, nice. from Sam Lasia. He has the Luchador, the Luchador El Gringo and his Black and His White series. Uh, we have one of the fastest growing cigars in the world. Yes, right incredible. Right here uh, with the Leaf by Oscar, uh, you know, coned by Island Jim Robinson uh, out of the Strip District here in PA. And then we have our cigar, Ed, the Josh Eagle and Ed Brandyberry special, the uh, Stack Cigar in our first release, the, the Dominican Cigar. That's right, Stack Habano. So... Where do you want to start, Ed? Well, I think it'd be interesting to start with how lightning strikes in a rare circumstance, and that being leaf. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's incredible to think that less than two years ago, I think it is, we first started carrying leaf as the first retailer outside of the leaf and bean stores. And Allegheny Smokeworks. And, and Allegheny Smokeworks, yep. that's right. So we were the only ones carrying this. Yes. And now we're not even two years later, and it is depending on who you talk to, in at least 800 shops, which, if you think about it, that's about one third, yes, of the shops that are classified as A type tobacconists for cigars in the whole United States. Yeah, IPCPR uh, registers 2,500 A right. level. They they count 2,500 shops like this one. Uh, in the country, and, and Jim is in almost one third at yeah. 800, which is um, a really incredible feat uh, because a lot of these boutique companies they never make it past <coughs> two, three hundred shops. That's right. That's right. It's it's a difficult and it's a difficult thing, unless a shop specializes entirely in boutiques. Uh, the, the competition is real. Oh yeah. And and we have over 800 facings here in our store, and Jim's. Uh, Jim's cigars do very well here. Uh, we only carry the Toro size right now, right. but he also has a 660. He had uh, he offended the rest of us Pittsburghers by making a Lancero and keeping it in his own shop. But you got to have some secrets. Uh, and some yeah, you got to have shop. that. Yeah. Or why make a cigar? I guess you know. Yeah. What I, mean? I, yeah. I heard a lot of complaints about that, but you know, I wasn't offended. I, you know? But you know, no, not not yeah. me either. I mean, really, that's his. That, that's got that's his niche. It comes there first. Why not? Yeah. You create it, you put your money behind That's it, you right. went down and blended it, and he teamed mm -hmm. up with a great guy, Oscar Valerdis. Mm -hmm. uh, he used to do some work for Rocky Patel, was a Central American distributor for Rocky Patel cigars, and then got into, with all the connections that he had in Honduras. A great he, guy. Fantastic Oscar's nice fantastic guy. guy. <clears throat> and, and there couldn't be two more different guys going together to make a cigar. No, you have a really soft-spoken, um, kind of blend in with the crowd guy and Oscar. And That's you right. have uh, a really... In your face. <laughs> it, it, Jim isn't really in your no, face. No, it's just his look it's is just, in your just, face. Yes, yeah, that's yes. what it is. It looks like he's in your face, but yeah. he's actually yeah. reserved as well. So We promised to have Jim Island Jim on mm -hmm. this show someday. Uh, but, uh, Don't come and talk. Busy man, though, with 800 shops. That's right. That's right. And he gets around. We'll just have to have an Island Gym event. But let's talk a bit about a bit of his stuff. Let's uh, let's start with the, one of the ones that uh, was received some accolades in uh, Cigar Journal, uh, and that would be is that the Maduro and the Connecticut both got over ninety ratings? Ninety or I above? think I think it was both of them, and and the uh, the Maduro I think got a ninety three, and the mm -hmm. Connecticut a ninety two. Mm -hmm. um, Something. Uh, you know, got to think about that. It, one. The amazing thing about the cigars. Uh, is the way they look, and you don't know. This could go either way with a consumer. Absolutely. Uh, they, they could look at this, they go, that's a cheap-looking, rough-looking cigar <laughs> because it's got a tobacco leaf instead of cellophane on the outside of it. 
but at the same time it sort of sparked an interest in the cigar mm -hmm. but the important thing is for retailers like ourselves and people who make cigars like Island Jim and Oscar is that uh, people want to come back and smoke them again and again and again and again because they're very good cigars yeah and very well made as was attested in our smoke off last year when uh, we had a Oscar smoked down to about the last half inch of the cigar and the whole thing in was one ash. ash. Yeah. In one ash. I mean, it was upside down like this, but I'm yeah, telling you. Yeah, I mean, the guy was holding it <laughs> upright, but um, he actually did smoke it. And the other fellow, it burnt so slow for him that the rest of us just gave up. And it would still stay lit. That's the smoking competition that we put on. Right. You know, you have to keep the cigar lit without going out, and mm -hmm. you just uh, how slow you can smoke it. And I'm horrible at that. I take them down. So am I. Look at me. I mean, just look we just, just started before this we, thing, yeah, it? I'm an inch in already. They say this cigar lasts an hour. I don't know who's smoking it, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to give you the same amount of time as a Churchill, which right. moves us on to that. Sam was involved with creating uh, both of these cigars. I have a Cane F, and you have the uh, Nub. Yep. Uh, is it the Cameroon? This is the Connecticut. Connecticut. Uh, what's Sam? Uh, Pleasant Hills born. Right, I think. He uh, is a local uh, celebrity, and he was in the alcohol business, did, got some interest in cigars, and started making some blends, and was really interested in taking cigars apart, mm -hmm. putting them back together again, um, changing the wrappers on... on cigars you buy off the shelf, swapping one out, putting it on the other cigar. Yeah. Uh, Learned how to do some blending and some rolling on his own. Was hired by Oliva, I think as a rep. I, I'm not sure, but yeah. I know that eventually they had a subdivision, which still exists, Studio Tobacco. Yes. Which produces the, uh, the uh, Oliva Cane, then the Nub lines, and he was very instrumental in the whole development of that part of their company. And, and a great uh, the the four inch cigar with the sixty ring gauge mm -hmm. uh, kind of revolutionized and, and and brought some attention to the bigger gauge cigars, which have now become super popular. Mm -hmm. And you can't even find a cigar big enough. You know, we'll take a look at that big Johnny and get back to that in a little bit. But right. people are looking for bigger and bigger and bigger cigars. And this is you know this is one of the reasons why it happened. This sixty in a small size, people were still willing to pick it up because it wasn't so overly huge. Became super popular. I uh, had nice four wrappers to choose from. You also had, what, a, a 66? Yeah, but it actually comes in a little torpedo, too. Mm. Um, they, the, a 464 torpedo, I think it is. And then a, they also have, like, a 358 short. That's, you know, an inch shorter uh, nub, or three and a half fifty-eight. And it's, uh, uh, the whole idea was that because they use li a lot of Lijero mm -hmm. in these, that uh, Lajero takes longer to uh, takes much longer to burn, and so uh, the idea was let's give someone a small cigar that will take them as long to smoke as a robusto or a toro or, in the case of the 460, they believe as almost as long as a Churchill. Yeah, and Lajero, you know, that's the top leaf. We've talked about it in prior episodes. It's mm -hmm. got, you know, the mo it, it gets absorbs the most sun, takes the most nutrients after they prime from the bottom. And it's not really that combustible, so they're using a lot of Lajero, and Sam's become a master of Lajero. Yeah. Um, he has used it in cane and oliva, and he also, with these nubs and the canes, he's like, almost four or five tobaccos are gonna show up in, either, in each one of the blends, and he's done it again with his own cigars. Oh, his own cigars way. are really, really good cigars. We'll start with uh, the newest release over here. This, this cigar is actually called the Frog Splash. Um, it's in the El Gringo line. It's a four and a half, By 70. 70 ring gauge, and it's got a, a really, it's like probably like a Spanish box press, I would say, the round yeah. size. Yeah. Kind of looks like a chocolate bar. Kind of a fun size in the El Gringo line. Uh, using more Nicaraguan tobacco than he has in some of the other blends right. of his releases. Um, this particular cigar also features the Pennsylvania tobacco, which you're gonna see. Tries to throw some American tobacco in every one of his right. cigars with Lucia. Um, this one has a, um, Dominican, Brazilian, 
Um, also some Pennsylvanian. You got Nicaraguan on the wrapper. I think he does a great job of giving us, uh, bringing together elements from different parts of the world and bringing them together and making a fine cigar mm -hmm. that uh, many people will enjoy. Yeah, I think Sam prides himself on finding things from other regions, maybe mm -hmm. some tobaccos that are unexplored, and he wants to try to find the fit for those mm -hmm. tobaccos, and he's done a great job with it. Um, his company was under the Tarano umbrella. For a distribution. For distribution for a short time before the entire Tarano portfolio was bought by General Cigar. And um, that relationship between Lucia and General uh, lasted until last week. So it only lasted right. about exactly one year. Yeah. And Sam is back out on his own. And uh, we're really looking forward to the exciting stuff. He still stuff lives he in the do. Pittsburgh area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still makes his home here. You won't see him very often. That's for you, Sam. You won't see him very often. But he yeah. lives in Pittsburgh, I trust me. <laughs> the black and the white are interesting cigars. Um, the white, he kind of tried to get that blend to be something more familiar mm -hmm. in smoking. It has Pennsylvania tobacco in it as well. But the, the black was something that he went uh, and, and did something that was different. They used the American Fire Cured and that has a smokier taste and gives yes. it a unique taste to the cigar uh nice in pairings with uh with bourbons and and cask stuff because of that smoky oaky flavor that it has right. so some exciting stuff from sam and we look forward to what he's doing in the future and, i think uh, we're probably going to be able to look forward to some interesting things mm -hmm. from sam you're back in full control i think he had pretty much full control with general had some additional resources probably learned a thing or two right but um, to be a small boutique competitor, the boutique cigars are smoked by a lot of these blogs and a lot of these Yeah, and contrary, and in Sam's defense, contrary to what anyone said, General never changed the tobacco. They never changed the way they were being made. It's the same cigar Sam was distributing while he was having Tarano distribute them. And now it's definitely the same because Sam's still in control. Right. So. And, and, and there was some talk out there that it's not the same. And you're going to get that when big companies eat up mm -hmm. anything small. Mm -hmm. uh, it happened with Blue Moon. Mm -hmm. happened with Line and Kugel. happened with, uh, it's probably going to happen, I think Blue Point just sold, and all these craft beers where they get bought up by the big guys. And I think Budweiser actually just put a bid in. I heard this two days ago from the distributor up north that Southern Tier is being bought by Budweiser. Wow. That would be huge news if that's actually true. Because they're probably one of the largest, uh, they shall make, we say, boutique or craft beer yes. makers. Um, the, the, up at the restaurant, when we get the beer, the beer list for Southern Tier in Northern Pennsylvania. Southern Tier is a Western New York company. Right. Um, Southwestern New York. Elmira, isn't it? Yeah. So they have three or four pages of different style beer. They just have so many beers. It's unbelievable. And But what's going to happen is I have a feeling once it's bought by Budweiser, it's no longer going to be, a, it's not a boutique anymore. People won't be chasing it down as much. You'll see it at every tap across the country. And it just happens, but that's what you do in business. You mm -hmm. try to get to the point where somebody actually takes a notice in what you're doing. And there are winners and losers in capitalism. We don't have to go down that road. No. But once you get to a certain plateau, the goal from the people underneath that plateau is to sell it to the people who've already made it to that plateau. It's not to be on their plateau. Mm -hmm. It's to sell it to that plateau. So, you know, with, with Sam, he's, he's reached a plateau in his company two times, and he's having a little bit of a reset here after, you know, you, get, you go through Oliva, you have your troubles there, you come out with your own brand. Tarania likes what you do. They want to distribute your cigar, so you need someone to distribute. They like the whole portfolio that will see us inside of the portfolio. General Cigar buys it. You made it, right? If you're a boutique company, you have the bloggers and all these internet trolls. You know they, they want to shut down your business because you're trying to move it forward and sell it to a big company. You know, I don't want to speak for Sam. I don't know if that's the case at all. Right. But uh, he no, just, he had good things to say about his I time bet. with General. And I bet he learned a lot. The resources mm -hmm. is something I probably couldn't have imagined. No. You know? they're, they're the largest maker of cigars in the world. But I also respect him for then jumping back out of that. You could have rode that. 
Oh yeah. He could have rode that. Mm -hmm. He could have turned it into the, uh, you know, the Lucia Menudo. Mm -hmm. You know, the Maca Lucia. He could have done yeah. whatever he wanted. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you could just put him in every shelf. But he wants to stick with his guns and 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 be small and and be creative. With I it. think that's the big thing with Sam. I think it's the ability to be creative. Mm -hmm. And I I'm not saying anything against General about that. But what I, I'm I'm guessing is that. It, just a little bit I've got to meet Sam and talk to him. He's a very creative guy. Absolutely. And he's always looking to advance experimentation, come up with something new, something even bold. Yes. Uh, and, and I think that that's what um, he'll be able to do better uh, on his own. He, he's going to have to line up his distribution, no doubt. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the same time, I, I wish Sam well. I hope he does well. His cigars are really picking up here. Yeah, and they're they're uh, they're fantastically flavorful. They are yeah. unique, and we wish him the best of luck, um, and we hope to see you soon. So, Oscar, Oscar Valerius and Jim Robinson, you got the uh, the cast of characters, and what they did with the packaging um, has changed the game. We and should show someone. Yeah, open this thing up like a present. All right. First of all, you start with this cigar. Y'all try to hold still for the camera. My hands shake, huh? No, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then what we have is we have this band, and the band is actually made from tobacco. Yes. The band is made from tobacco. All right. This is an all tobacco, all tobacco cigar. And then this leaf. Now, I've known some guys who've tried to smoke it this way. And I don't think it's the best experience you're going to have. <laughs> no, absolutely not, because you're taking it. So very let me show you the right way to do a leaf. That's binder tobacco that's, that's on the right. outside. That's right. And there. so what you want to do is you just take this off, just like you would take off cellophane. You roll that out. There you, now you have, look, tobacco leaves. And you take those and discard them. And then, or, yeah, I guess one of our audience members said we could hang them up. Yeah. And uh, then you have a, just a regular Toro. Yep. There it is. Beautiful. Beautiful cigar. They have beautiful wrappers. Mm -hmm. He really does. And I could unwrap each one of these to show you the difference. But this particular one has a Honduran, all Honduran tobacco, except for the wrapper. Mm -hmm. So it's not a Puro, but it is a Nicaraguan Jalapa wrapper, a Nicaraguan Jalapa Maduro. And he, he likes that wrapper, evidently, because he put put a uh, Jalapa Nicaraguan here, Jalapa here, on the Big Johnny. This is, you stand that up and stand our little Robusto next to that, and you can see the difference, folks. This Big Johnny is a big cigar. You see the end of it, and that's quite a difference. Um, and that's that's a three-hour cigar. Yeah, and it's absolutely uh, got good flavor all the way through too. It so, does. Yeah. So yeah, it's Honduran, mm -hmm. and this is also Honduran with the uh, Jalapa wrapper. Now, when we move down the line, uh, we go to this. Uh, which one? This is the Connecticut. This is unusual in that all the tobacco is from Honduras, including the Connecticut wrapper. There aren't a lot of. Honduran Connecticut wrappers that I'm familiar with. I could be wrong, and someone that knows better can call me or write in to me. But uh, then here, the Sumatra, it's an Ecuadorian Sumatra, very common place mm -hmm. for wrappers to come from. Ecuador, from Ecuador. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, that's where normally that's where you'd find a lot of the Connecticut wrappers grown. Yes. You, most of them are grown in Ecuador. Yeah, a huge percentage. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, then we have this uh, Corojo. And the uh, Corojo is another uh, Puro. Uh, Ecuadorian. Or no, uh, Honduran. No, Honduran. No, I didn't so, know that about the Corojo. Yeah, so you have two, two Puros in his line, which is really interesting. Not, not many people put out that many. Um, no, and really, really focusing on the Honduran tobacco. And there's not a, a ton of companies out there left in Honduras. Um, and they just recently purchased the Oliva factory. Right. Uh, so they're moving up in the world. That's right. You know, this fun island gym here looks like a pencil. Guys, the pencil tip. Got the shaggy foot. 
comes actually pre-cut. You can smoke it without cutting it. Or you can cut it and smoke it on the Connecticut. Yeah. Little it, tip that's there. It, the interesting thing about that, too, is is that uh, uh, along with that cigar, you get a caricature of uh, Island Jim. Yes, you do. <laughs> right there on the label. <laughs> and Jim... Jim, when someone commented about that at the trade show, he says, I am a character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jim, uh, always with the yellow glasses, uh, wears the uh, the hat, mm -hmm. has uh, the Hawaiian-inspired shirts, shorts, and loafers, uh, likes that relaxed and chill lifestyle, uh, and is living it and breathing and it every wahoo day. wahoo is and his... Wahoo. <laughs> and by living it and breathing it, I mean, that, that... I don't think he would have said to himself that I'm going to be the marketer, marketing genius. He's just being himself, mm -hmm. which actually I think people are really um, gravitating to with the cigar and, and some of its success. Now back to the bloggers and the trolls out there. You have this cigar and then some of the jealous competition. You know, uh, this cigar has been really, really, really well received yes. by bloggers. Yes. Um, it has been very well received by critics of boutique cigars. Um, every guy with a Twitter handle that uh, reviews cigars really likes this cigar. And some of the jealous competition, the bigger competition from what we have heard, is that this is a gimmick. The packaging is a gimmick, and uh, I couldn't disagree more. Um, that packaging is genius. Uh, there's nothing gimmicky about it. It's just well packed. It's a tobacco leaf. It's a tobacco leaf. With Why a tobacco didn't someone band. else do it sooner? I don't right. know. Um, and I think that, that there's some jealousy in that one. I'm gonna yeah. have to say that. Yeah, because I, I agree with you. That that cigar is that's not a gimmick. It's um, it's just well done, and they're just jealous they didn't think of it. But you know, a gimmick is if it uh, you know if if this cigar came with a yo-yo, you know that would be a gimmick. <laughs> or yellow glasses. Or yellow glasses, <laughs> but. The that packaging on the leaf. Don't is just put that amazing. behind him. Though. That's Beyond right. him, no. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It's come with the glasses. It comes with the glasses. That might presume. be what you get at an island at a uh, leaf event. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but you know what? They're 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 all really well done, and they're all they really are. nice cigars. And you can't uh, say it enough that the growth has just been unprecedented. And yeah, amazing. I mean we 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 would hope for ten percent of that growth our first right. year. Right. <laughs> no kidding. And. Um, They've been doing a nice job of keeping up with it. They had some hiccups there right away, but mm -hmm. you know when you expand from five stores to 800, you, yeah. you learn what you're doing pretty quick. And, and they were able to adapt, and they've been moving off back. This is their second purchase of a factory in the last two years. Right, right. So you're really just getting bigger and bigger, and uh, and I hope them, the, you know, that they have the staying power that their next cigar is going to be as successful as uh, mm -hmm. the ones that they had now. I'd love to see that happen, and. Um, I think it was a good move to add the 660. We aren't always huge fans of a 660, but he also bounced that out with his limited edition Lancero mm -hmm. in his own shop. And he has so a Robusto he's showing too, he right? can do it both. Does he have a Robusto? He may. I don't know if he has a Robusto. I think that's only in his shop also. Yeah, I think Robusto, which I'd be really curious to see how they smoked in Robusto, but the Toro size, most popular size of any right. cigar, really. Yeah. Um, it's the traditional size of a cigar, and he does the nice... Uh, is that a 50 ring, 6 Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a smaller ring. He's not one of those 54, 56 mm -hmm. ring Toros. The bigger Toros. Yeah. yeah. So, again, you got to get anyone out there, you got to try any of these cigars we just mentioned. You got to support the local uh, guys going out there and doing this, putting their necks on the line. Which brings us to our last uh, little tidbit today. We have the Stack Cigar, which is our cigar. Yes, it is. What's in we there? We worked Ed? over a year on that, didn't we? Mm hmm. Uh, we have uh, all Dominican uh, tobacco for this one, other than the wrapper. It's an Ecuadorian Habano, Habano wrapper with uh, Dominican Allure binder, mm -hmm. and it has uh, Corojo 90, no. 98. Yeah, Corojo 98, 98 uh, and uh, other Dominican filler. Cubano Piloto. Right, Cubano Piloto. And it gives you a bit of uh, a nuttiness to the cigar, mm -hmm. uh, the Dominicans over the Nicaraguan stuff. Um, we're happy with the release. Like I said, we didn't have as much control over the process as we wanted. It's like these guys have control over That's the right. process. Um, but we have some exciting news. I think we've mentioned it on a prior show that yeah. we do have um, 
a brand new cigar that will be released uh, shortly, we hope. So we have more control over the process and and um, supply was our biggest problem. Supply is a problem. Um, and the wear, I think, was a little bit of a problem, mm -hmm. too. Uh, the cigar, it, it came out nice, you know, and it's mm -hmm. well done. But with our next release, I think we have the, uh, the ability to compete with the rest of the stuff we see on the tape. Well, no doubt about it. The, the, uh, the resources that A.J. Fernandez is able to bring to the table. Absolutely. Uh, to help us be successful as a boutique company um, is, I, I, you know, we can pat each other on the back on TV here, but yeah. I think that time will bear out that it's a good choice to go to someone who gives us options. Absolutely. And the cigar that we chose, um, we're going to use some Pennsylvania tobacco of our own. I think that's right. all we'll tell you. Yeah, I think that's good right yeah, now. Yeah, so we're going to use some Pennsylvania tobacco in this blend and uh, couldn't be more excited about it. You know, I'm sad that we're out of them because I'd like to smoke those ones mm -hmm. again. But I'll go try to get us some more in February. That would be exciting when I try to get that cigar moving, get it into some shops, and, yeah. and visit our friends here that make some great cigars and, you know, mm -hmm. put some in their hands and let them know what they think, let them see what they think. I'll tell you what, you can, you can go some places I won't mention, and you can get these cigars a few places, some of them online. But I, I'll tell you what, there's nothing like the experience of going in and visiting your local cigar shop and going in and spending time in their lounge and enjoying a cigar. Sometime maybe some of our audience will just have them sit with us and they can talk about their experience sitting in a cigar lounge. But I think that you're gonna enjoy these cigars. These cigars are designed by men who enjoy sitting in a shop with the customers. Yeah, they enjoy smoking a cigar with you. Sam does. Jim definitely does, and, and they're both down-to-earth guys, mm -hmm. and I think you should support their products. And if you have a chance to grab those cigars, uh, don't miss out on the opportunity. I don't, I can't think of, of one of them that's bad. I no, mean, they're not. They're all know, fantastic. They're good. You can't make mistakes when you're that small. No, you can't make mistakes. And the, and the fun thing about it is, if you if you're in Pittsburgh and you pick up one of these cigars. You know, the stories that you hear about the people that know the people just mm -hmm. becomes becomes fun. It becomes mm -hmm. a, a smaller culture. The, the, the small culture that is cigars in the country becomes even smaller when you're in Pittsburgh smoking a cigar from someone from Pittsburgh. Right. Which there are not many of them. You know, um, I can't even think of any other ones. I mean, I know George Rodriguez made a, a home here for a little bit in the right. Rodrigo, Rodrigo cigar. Rodrigo line. Mm -hmm. But that was never really a Pittsburgh guy with a pit. These are Pittsburgh guys with, with Pittsburgh attitudes yeah that are making blue collar cigars none of these cigars are thirty dollars no no they're all under ten dollars they're all very smokable mm -hmm. you know from no matter what palette you like from the full you know sammy can get a little bit more on the full mm -hmm. side so you got to like enjoy that he's bolder yeah he's more, like then the, then the say the leafs and uh, the stack they're going to stay more in that medium medium plus range sam can get up there in strength but most of them are still just a titch you know above medium oh yeah and they, they smoke great. So, Sam, Jim, Oscar, us, mm -hmm. you know, get out there and smoke one of these guys and visit the shop, ask for something from Pittsburgh. And if you got people visiting from out of town, great chance to buy some cigars right. and they're not going to smoke, except for the Leaf and the Liceo. They won't smoke stack in Pittsburgh, unless they're in Pittsburgh, let's put it that way. We'll try to change that. We'll change that. But you can actually probably grab these. Uh, you probably find Leaf in Lasia pretty much anywhere. <laughs> so Yeah, definitely Leaf. Yeah, at this point. Yeah. So for everybody out there watching, we appreciate you watching and tuning in. For Ed Brandyberry, I'm Josh Eagle. Get out there and burn a Pittsburgh cigar.